Hey everybody, it's Ornlu, and with the Dynasties of India DLC almost upon us as I'm recording this, it is, I think, a good idea to go over some of the unique units of this DLC. I've already covered the two regional units, the Armored Slash Siege Elephant as well as the Elephant Archer, and now I'm going to be taking a dive into each of the civilization's unique units, the new ones of course, and I will be starting with the Bengalis, who only have one unique unit, unlike all of the other civs. But this unit here, the Ratha, of course, is their castle unique unit. And it is one of, if not the most complicated units in the entire game. So let's get right into it. So at its core, the Ratha is a chariot rider, and it can switch between a melee and ranged attack at will. Guys are kind of just teleporting between the sword and the bow, but as you can see, I am flipping between melee and ranged attacks. And that is pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. Right away, this is going to give the Ratha some interesting designations. So as I was saying that this is probably the most complicated unit in the entire game, in terms of number of upgrades, the Ratha requires more upgrades than any other unit in all of Age of Empires 2 to be fully upgraded. At 18 upgrades, this unit, this unit benefits from 18 different upgrades, which barely edges out the Koenig from Bulgarians at 17. Also, it is the most expensive unit to fully upgrade in the game, coming in at, by my count, 8,965 total resources, so just under 9k total resources, and that's just going to barely beat out the Camel Archer, which was at 8,850, so if my quick math can uh, not fail me, that is 115 total more resources, or more resources total to compared to the Camel Archer, so yeah, this is going to be quite the deep dive here into the Ratha, so let's just get right into it with the unit stats. Alrighty, so just like with the uh, Armored Elephants, I'm going to put these stats for you in a beautiful little MS Paint box on the screen, just so it's a bit easier to digest. And when I talk about the Ratha, we're going to first talk about sort of the shared stats between both versions of the unit, as well as then the differences between the, uh, the ranged and then melee versions of the Ratha. So, starting with shared stats. This unit will cost 60 wood and 60 gold, making it a more expensive version of a Cav Archer. And as we will see, this is a, at its very core, a Cav Archer unit. So when all else fails, think of this, the Ratha as a Cav Archer. So costing the same amount of gold as a Cav Archer and 50% more wood. HP though, these guys are chonky at 105 HP. That is over double the uh, Cav Archer, which is at 50. Uh, not to war wagon levels, but, you know, these are going to be some tanky, tanky units, especially for their cost. Their armor is two melee armor and one pierce armor, so they are, you know, even okay-ish armored, especially in the melee front, which is going to be helpful for the melee version of this unit, of course. They have a reload time of two seconds, which is pretty much the standard for, like, most units in Age of Empires. It's the same reload time as the Archer line, Cav Archer line, Swordsman line, uh, Scout Cavalry and Light Cavalry, Camels, Eagle Warriors, like a bunch of bunch of units all have that sort of base reload time of two seconds. However, this can be improved by 20% with the researching of one of their unique techs, which I will get into in a little bit. Their movement speed. These guys move around at 1.30 tiles per second. And that puts them as a pretty fast unit, but not quite as fast as, say, a knight. So the 1.3 tile per second tier of units is stuff like Conquistadors, Arambai, and Boyars. There we go. <laughs> that took me a second. But yeah, Conquistadors, Arambai, Boyars all have that slightly slower movement speed than a knight, which is uh, 1.35 tiles per second. So they are fast but they're not like the fastest. However, they will be, be, be benefiting from husbandry, as we will see in a little bit. Their line of sight is six tiles, which is shared with the elite, which you can just kind of see here. So, you know, it's decent enough line of sight for raiding. And then uh, neither version of the unit deals any kind of bonus damage, uh, sort of like as a base. So there's, you can get, you know, they do benefit from a certain upgrade to get some bonus damage, but as a base unit, they don't get any bonus damage against anything. And they only take 18 seconds to train, which is pretty decent for a unit that is this powerful. So already we can start to see just how strong and versatile the Ratha is. 
Now, as far as their armor classes go, this is where things can get a bit confusing. We have archers, cavalry, cav archers, and unique unit as like the main armor classes. And that means they will be taking bonus damage against uh, things that do bonus damage against archers, cavalry, cav archers, and unique units. The only thing that does bonus damage against unique units is samurai. Uh, but the big thing is that even when in melee mode, they are taking bonus damage from like skirmishers, uh, even from camel archers. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. Your armor class does not change when you switch between the two firing modes of the unit. But speaking more to the differences of the unit, really this just comes down to their attack. You can see that the melee version of the Ratha has an attack of 10, so the same as a knight, an accuracy of 100%, and an, a range of 0, which is the same for like every single melee unit in the game. Really, it's just like a knight. It's cut, like a little bit worse stats, obviously, um, so they're not going to be as strong in melee combat. Uh, they have a slower attack rate, and they move slower, and they uh, I guess they have a little bit more HP, but you're looking at at least a pretty decent melee unit. Now for the ranged Ratha, we have 5 base attack, 80% accuracy, and 4 range. Now, the 5 base attack means that you are a little bit lower than a Cav Archer, which is 6 in uh, Castle Age. Uh, range is exactly the same, uh, but you are looking at a much chonkier unit, also slower. Um, Cav Archers have a base movement speed of 1.40, and the Ratha, like I said, is 1.30. Uh, but you do get more accuracy, so Cav Archers have a base accuracy of 50%, Rathas have 80% in the Castle Age when ranged, which is pretty decent. However, you don't get the Thumb Ring tech as Bengalis, so you are stuck at that 80% accuracy, so you're not really getting the 100% uh, accuracy, I guess, that you'd be looking for with a sieve that has Thumb Ring. So jumping now to the elite version of the unit, uh, I didn't put it on the screen, but notably this uh, elite upgrade, actually I can show you here, it costs 800 food and 800 wood. So like elite plumed archer and elite kipchak, this is a gold free elite tech. So that can make it a little bit easier to get in uh, you know, early imperial age. So that's actually very much worth noting. Uh, but as far as other shared stats, most of this is going to be exactly the same. The only difference being that we now have 10 more HP, so a slight HP uh, bump compared to the Castle Age version. And really everything else is exactly the same when it comes to the non-attack stats. So let's just go ahead and jump over to those. You can see that the Elite Ratha as a melee unit deals 12 damage as opposed to 10. So you're jumping from a knight to a cavalier, essentially, in terms of melee attack. Everything else exactly the same there. And then for the ranged version, we have one more base attack. We're going up to six, so the same as a Castle Age Cav Archer, but one less still than a Heavy Cav Archer. Still four range, but we do go up to 90% base accuracy, which is pretty much where the unit maxes out, which, you know, makes it at least pretty good. You know, you're the same as an Arbalest at that point, so it's at least a solid unit, a little bit lower in the damage, but of course much, much tankier. So now with the sort of base stats of the unit in mind, let's go ahead and jump over to the sorts of upgrades that this unit benefits from, which I said, there are a lot. So at a very basic level, like I said, this is a Cav Archer. So let me just turn on Aegis so we can have the text researched instantly. So as you can see, you get Fletching and the ranged version benefits from Fletching all the way up through Bracer. Whereas the melee version doesn't, that makes perfect sense. Same goes for the melee attack upgrades. You have the melee Ratha benefiting from forging, uh, iron casting, and blast furnace. Range 1 doesn't. This all makes sense. Now this is where things can get a little bit confusing. Both versions of the unit, their armor and defenses never ever change. Something to always keep in mind, you can never make your unit any more or less tanky by switching between firing modes. So that means that because they are a Cav Archer, they both benefit from padded Archer armor all the way up through Ring Archer armor. So you can see right here, even though I have none of the Cavalry defense upgrades, both versions of the units are now at the uh, plus three, plus four. Furthermore, they both benefit from Parthian tactics. It is available to the Bengalis. So we research that upgrade and we can see that yes, our armor is now improved at 6-7 uh, armor for both the melee and ranged versions. But as I alluded to earlier, it also means that both versions get plus two bonus damage versus Spearmen. So yeah, even when you're in melee mode, you're getting two extra attack versus Spearmen once you get the Parthian tactics upgrade, which is pretty handy, honestly. 
Now looking over to other buildings, as you might imagine, they benefit from both bloodlines and husbandry. So you can see our HP is improving just a little bit. And uh, we are going to be clippity clopping along a bit faster as well. At the monastery, they benefit from faith, which, I mean, is kind of straightforward. You can just convert these guys as if they were cav archers. Nothing too odd about that. And then at the university, the uh, ranged ones benefit from ballistics and chemistry. You can see we are now up to four attack. Whereas the melee ones, because they are benefiting from forging, iron casting, and blast furnace, they can get plus four attack just from the, the blacksmith, as opposed to needing to use the university, like pretty much every other ranged unit in the game. Now, at the castle, of course, we have our elite upgrade, 800 food, 800 wood. Gives us our elite rathas. Cool. Conscription. They're trained at the castle, so yeah, conscription helps them. And now, here's where the fun stuff comes in. Pikes. Rathas and elephant units attack 20% faster. So 375 wood, 275 gold, fairly expensive. This is kind of like a late castle age, early imperial age pickup when possible, but it does improve the attack speed of both versions of the unit by um, 20%. So you're looking at actually a pretty darn fast attacking unit. No, your accuracy is never 100% on the ranged ones because you don't have thumb ring, but the actual like raw fire rate and you know subsequent raw DPS is actually pretty solid for both versions of the unit. So. As we can see, the Ratha, it is a strong, strong, unique unit, and one that I think will be worth going for like a fast castle into unique unit type of build, because again, it costs wood and gold, it's not too expensive, and you're just getting a lot of stats per unit. Alrighty, testing time! So, I am in the post-imperial age, just note that the castle age fights are going to look pretty similar, just, you know, with castle age units, but... Of course, I feel like you guys would want to see the full upgrade big Imperial Age battles going. So here we have the melee Rathas on the left and the ranged Rathas on the right. Here we have, uh, what is it, 20 fully upgraded Spanish champions. And what I'm going to do to at least best test this is once I select the outpost, the melee units are just going to, you know, go attack each other and do all that stuff. And I'm going to do my best to micro, well, such as my microing abilities are. But as a rule... You can see that in the big straight-up fight, it is going to look better for melee units. Of course, you can dance around as best you can. So, you can see that we barely lost with our melee units um, to the champions. Whereas if we have, uh, you know, all the time and micro in the world, we can dance around with our chariots. You know, they are much faster than these swordsmen. And we'll probably kill them eventually. Ah! The power of micro! So yeah, you can see that with a bunch of micro, the ranged ones will go ahead and beat uh, the champions, whereas the melee ones won't really be taking the most efficient fights in the world. Simply, they are not going to be very cost efficient. Yes, I got gave them double the, uh, the numbers, but of course, champions much cheaper and easier to afford than the expensive Ratha. So you do trade some raw strength for your versatility. All right, so next up is going to be versus Halberdiers, and this is going to go about as well as you can imagine. So we've got 20 generic Spanish Halbs over here, the melee Rathas. Well, we can't imagine they're going to be doing all that well, and we'll see if the Power of Worn Loom Micro is going to be enough to defeat twice as many um, Halbs with our arranged versions. But it's going to be very difficult. Remember, we are much slower than Cav Archers. Oh yeah, we got cleaned up with our melee units. The ranged ones, I mean, benefiting from Parthian Tactics does help us out a little bit, but it's simply not going to be the most practical thing in the world to, you know, micro down a ton of halbs. This is really a situation where you need uh, population efficiency to come in, because you are never going to be taking a cost-efficient fight over here. Ripperino. All right, so next up is it going to be against ranged units. We have 15 Saracen Arbalests over here. And now we can just have a kind of a straightforward fight. We are going to be pretty darn chonky with our 135 HP and 7 Pierce Armor. So let's see which of the two variants of the units does better. 
I mean, they're both going to clean up super easily. It's just going to be a matter of which does it faster. And you can see that if you can get in with the melee units, they are going to be chop, chop, chopping away way, way faster, especially with that pikes bonus. They are attacking super quickly. Now, in a real situation, yeah, the uh, red player is likely going to be microing around a little bit, which is going to make the uh, ranged Rathas probably a bit more attractive. But, I mean, if you're able to just, like, run stuff down with your chariots, yeah, they're going to go be butchering those archers super easily. All right, so now we're going to be moving on to elite skirmishers. Now, these are going to be a counter to the Ratha, especially cost-efficiently, and... As you can imagine, the melee ones are going to be performing better, but they're still going to be taking that bonus damage. So, let's just see how bad it is. Being able to screw with the minimum range of the elite skirmishers with the melee is obviously uh, pretty darn useful. And you can see that the melee Rathas really lost one right there. Whereas, when they're in ranged mode, we're going to lose them all, and we're going to lose them all super hard. So, like, yeah, they deal a bunch of extra damage. And again, in a real scenario, there's going to be a lot more micro involved than just this. But, yeah, the low base damage of the Ratha means that you're only dealing two damage per shot and Ripperino. But, yeah, if you can get them into melee mode, and it's, it's really easy. It's just, like, a literal instantaneous transformation. You just swap with uh, the default hotkey being B. And, yeah, so the melee Ratha is obviously being way, way better against Skirms. All right, moving on to Cavalry. We will now be facing some Hussars first. 15 generic Hussars versus the melee and then the ranged Rathas. Now, the higher Pierce Armor and much faster movement speed of the Hussars would make me believe that the melee Rathas are going to be performing much better, but let's see how we can do. We do get some extra melee armor with this unit. Remember, two melee armor is pretty darn nice. So despite being outnumbered, you know, 1.5 to 1, you can see that the melee Rathas are absolutely cleaning house. Whereas the ranged Rathas, well, we are probably going to be losing this one eventually. Maybe. Ranged units are pretty OP. Regardless, it's a much slower fight. Oh, man, that one Rotha got kind of left behind. But yeah, I mean, this is just a tricky unit to play against, right? Because if you want to run in with a bunch of Hussars to, like, deal with the ranged version of the Rathas, they'll just, you know, whip out their swords and become much, much stronger. So yeah, I mean, we were able to win, but, you know, with fewer units remaining and taking, like, 15 times as long. So, Hussars, not a great counter. Alright, now moving on to Heavy Camels. We have some just generic Chinese, uh, fully upgraded Heavy Camels over here. And as we can imagine, the Rathas are not going to be doing so hot, because they are, of course, cavalry units. And they're much slower than the Camels. I mean, Camels are al already faster than Cav Archers, but, I mean... These camels are way faster. And yeah, the melee ones obviously getting completely butchered. Ranged ones can be holding out a little bit longer with the power of micro. But yeah, I mean, it's not a pretty sight. So our final test of the day is going to be against the good old-fashioned paladin. We have only eight paladins because they are more expensive than the Rathas. But let's see how the ranged ones versus the melee ones perform. I imagine neither are going to be doing all of that well. Remember, paladins are faster than us. Well, actually, I mean, doing better than I thought. Dang, do we win versus the Paladins? I mean, I haven't done any of these tests beforehand. <laughs> Dang, you do beat the Paladins cost efficiently. Not by a lot, but man, is this unit strong. That two melee armor and high attack rate is really something. Yeah, obviously the ranged ones... Maybe we could micro them down for days and days, but it's not going to be that great. Definitely, against Paladins, use your melee version.
Anyway, guys, that's going to be all of the testing for the Ratha that I'm going to do today. Uh, I hope you found this useful, nice, in-depth overview of one of the coolest new unique units from this DLC. Bengalis, they're such a cool sieve in my opinion. You've got the whole elephant aspect, you have the Ratha aspect, and you have just, you know, decent units all around. So definitely let me know in the comments what you think of the Ratha. Personally, I think it's going to be one of the best unique units in the game. You can see that, yeah, they kind of struggle a ton versus Halbs, but even skirmishers can be dealt with uh, in melee mode as well as uh, Hussars to some degree. So I think this is going to be like a great new castle drop into unique unit style unit. 18 second train time, honestly, that's something that might get nerfed in the future because that's pretty darn fast. So yeah, we'll have to see how these guys perform. Definitely leave a like if you guys enjoyed and or found this helpful, and I will see you all next time.